Good morning, Bill. How are you doing today? Good, Arrow. Thanks for having me in. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Your Killing Series has been the most incredible journey. And the reason why is because it's not about going to Google to get a quick answer. What you do is you take us deep into the story and give us the facts about what really took place. Look, this is the 13th Killing Book, most successful nonfiction book series in the world. And the reason is that many people really want to know what happened in the past, particularly in their own country. And we combine that with a thriller aspect. So it's a page turner, but you learn something on every page. Killing the Witches is a great subject because not only is it harrowing what happened in 1692 in Salem, but the witch hunt is back today, Arrow. Yes, it is. In the form of cancel culture. Yep, yep. So that's why I chose this subject to be the 13th killing book. To go into this journey, though, I mean, I'd love to just sit there for two or three days of research with you to find out how you dig into this, because when when you bring it out to us, you you put it in a way that is, you know, where you, you can't put it down after four or five pages, 20 pages later, you're still reading it. Yeah, we want to keep you up. And this is the best Halloween book ever, Killing the Witches, (laughs) with apologies to Poe. But the research process, I learn a tremendous amount. Killing the Witches is not a hard book to research. Killing Jesus was our toughest research because the uh, history of it was so scant. We got it, but it took really a long time, which is every word of the trials was written down. They were methodical, these Puritans. Mm -hmm. And today the manuscripts are in museums and we got all of them. Wow! So we didn't have to make any uh, speculation or anything. This is what was said. This is what was done. And here's who did it. So it wasn't difficult. But then we got into how the witch trials and executions, 20 human beings, it was mass murder, influenced the Constitution, and then we take you up to modern times. So there's a lot in this book. When you when you did this book, I mean, first of all, the one thing that really that really you know drew me closer to the pages was the fact that you were very transparent when you said that early America was shaped by ministers and religion. And then you stop and you look at your own world now and you're going, oh, my God, like you said, it's happening again. You know, the due process thing in America is really on the ropes, and that's because of the media, both corporate and social. Mm -hmm. And any accusation can destroy people. And in the latter half of Killing the Witches, we give you individual Americans whose lives have been destroyed because people accuse them of stuff that wasn't true and they had they can't recover. And that's got to stop. And that's the overall theme that I want everyone to take away. This lack of due process has got to stop in this country. So what is the demonic possession these days? I mean, because I don't don't see anybody running around, you know, pretending to be a witch or anything like that. Although I will bring up a question a little bit later on about that. Well, if you go to Salem, I mean, they're making millions and millions of dollars from the witch deal, particularly this time of year. Um, Witchcraft is essentially your communing with the devil. You're doing what the devil wants you to do. That's the definition of a witch. Okay? Mm-hmm. And that is was a crime in Europe, and thousands of people were burned. It was heresy. Joan of Arc, the most famous. In America and England, it was a crime against the crown, witchcraft. They didn't burn you. They hanged you. Now, the cancel culture has basically said, we'll destroy you in the court of public opinion. But there is an element of demonic possession that is still alive in America, and that's the exorcism deal. So we, at the end of Killing the Witches, tell you the story of Ronald Hunkler, a 13-year-old boy in Maryland who was the subject of the Exorcist book and movie. They changed it to a girl in the movie and in the book to make it more sympathetic. But this 13-year-old, what he went through, Arrow, is 
unbelievable. And we documented down to the last period. And I tell my atheist friends, just read these couple of chapters and come and report back to me. <laughs> and they don't have any, they can't say anything because we got psychiatrists and medical doctors and family, are they all lying? So that's a, a very, very chilling element of killing the witches. I was recently with Devin Forrest, who, who claims to be a witch historian as well as a self-proclaimed witch. Man, you're spot on when you say that it's talking with the devil because that's exactly what he was talking about. That's not a healthy thing. No. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's true. And when you see the documentation that comes up, about modern day exorcisms and uh, unexplained phenomenon in that area, that, that'll keep you up at night. Mm, mm, mm. What do you feel when you're writing this? Because does it scare you at all? Does it? Because I mean, you're, you're seeing this uh, in history, but you're also seeing it in, in today's world. I mean, as a journalist and as a historian, what, what are you feeling? I'm more dispassionate. I mean, I'm a big boy. I, I've seen it all pretty much and I can handle it. Um, I, I have never encountered any kind of devil or, or any uh, of the occult that's never happened to me. And I've been in pretty terrible places. Uh, we did a story in Italy about a satanic cult that was murdering people. And that was very eerie. Mm. I report what happened. And so I don't get emotionally involved in that. I just lay it out to people. Man, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Bill. I appreciate it, Aaron. Nice of you to have me on. Stay strong. You be brilliant, okay? Yep. Thank you.